It's a story as old as time. A group of financially independent young men find each other on the internet. They realize they have similar libertarian beliefs and decide they should start their own nation. They then convince a bunch of other men, usually ones who aren't so financially independent, to buy into this scheme to support their big dream of building a perfect libertarian state. It doesn't really even matter what kind of internet community we're talking about, this tends to happen anywhere and everywhere. Twelve years ago, Redditors tried to organize Reddit Island, and then they tried to do it again like a year ago. Doesn't matter what we're talking about, you put enough men together on the internet, they're going to try to organize their own sovereign state. But there do tend to be a few things that screw these projects up. First, libertarians inherently don't work together very well. That's kind of a crucial philosophical point for them. Second, even if they do manage to organize themselves, they typically can't amass enough capital to buy a piece of land they can turn into their own country. Buying an island or an abandoned oil tanker or a random field in the middle of nowhere is expensive and complicated. But even if everything else goes right, there is one thing no group of online free market weirdos have ever been able to agree on. It's a topic that's so controversial in this community and causes so much infighting that even the mere mention of it will implode the project, whatever it is. And that topic is, of course, age of consent laws. And that's exactly what threw the Crypto Land project into chaos last week. Hi there, my name is Ryan Broderick. I write a newsletter called Garbage Day. I'm a freelance tech writer and I'm back with a new video and a new fun shirt. People were mentioning that in the comments. Thank you, I I take pride in my fun shirts. And I also have with me once again, my trusty motion graphics artist, John. And we are back this week with a new video talking about a very interesting uh, failed internet experiment called Cryptoland. Cryptoland is what's called a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or a DAO, which are cryptocurrency-backed communities that tend not to be decentralized or autonomous or even that organized. If you're new to this world, a DAO typically picks a goal, in this case, buying an island in Fiji that they can live on. Then the DAO generates what's called a crypto token, which people can buy. That token acts like a share of a stock, and buying tokens gives you access to the community behind the project, which is typically hosted on Discord. And these tokens also give you voting power. It's a little hard to wrap your head around, but I find it's easiest to imagine if a chat room was structured like a stockholders meeting. I want to be very upfront. I am a skeptic when it comes to cryptocurrency, but I try to be optimistic. I'm trying not to be super pessimistic about this stuff. I think it is exciting. Anytime there's a new kind of generation of technology that we can interface with and experiment with, I think is a cool, interesting thing, but there are problems. I think we can all agree there are problems. But the crypto market is off to a pretty wild start to the year. Cryptocurrency as a whole is kind of way down in terms of where it should be as a market, investors thought, you know, Bitcoin, for instance, would be worth much more at this point. And also a lot of inexperienced traders are being pulled in via retail trading apps like Coinbase, and they're falling for pretty bad scams. In fact, a couple weeks ago, Todd Kramer, the owner of Ross and Kramer Gallery, tweeted a pretty iconic collection of words. According to Decrypt, Kramer fell for a phishing scam, which is becoming more and more common uh, as a way to target NFT traders. Kramer was able to get OpenSea, the largest NFT trading platform, to freeze the trading of his apes, uh, which totaled around $1.9 million worth. But also it became a pretty good example of how NFTs and the current Web3 landscape isn't actually that decentralized. I mean, if you really, really wanted a decentralized financial landscape, should OpenSea even be able to freeze the trading of his apes? I mean, that's a question worth asking, right? 
But I'd argue this response from a Twitter user named Exit Liquidity One is even funnier than the All My Apes Are Gone tweet. The Twitter user wrote, My JPEGs are at zero risk of being stolen because I'm careful as fuck and have taken the right steps to make sure I'm not vulnerable to an attack. I'm glad your JPEGs are at zero risk of being stolen. So as I said, Web3 is the banner term for everything we're talking about in this video. It's the idea that Web1 was a static, readable internet. Web2.0 is a social internet made of dynamic and centralized platforms. And this kind of vague notion of Web3, or what's sometimes called the metaverse, is a decentralized internet that a lot of people want to run on the blockchain, uh, which would turn content into assets with an intrinsic value. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around. I find the easiest way to think about it is what if the internet was built out of Pokemon cards. It's kind of a not a 100% great way to think about it, but it helps if you're having issues. But it's also an internet where everyone has a financial stake in the success of an internet community, and that comes with a pretty inherent conflict of interest. If everyone has a financial stake in the success of a DAO, it means, yeah, you can get everybody on board really, really fast and whip up a ton of attention and, and interest. But it can also spin out of control. I mean, if, if no one wants to be a dissenting voice, then everyone's just sort of hurtling towards a goal that isn't really clearly defined or having any real criticism. No one wants to be the guy who pisses in the punch bowl at the party, right? Cryptoland is one of these projects, which didn't make a lot of sense, but people were really, really interested in it uh, before it became a punching bag on Twitter. Cryptoland was founded by crypto evangelists Max Olivier and Helena Lopez. The idea was to raise enough money to buy an island for digital nomads. The trailer they put out is honestly indecipherable from satire. What's that? The Vladimir Club, Cryptolanders members only club. We are preparing everything for tonight. We are throwing the most epic crypto party ever. I wonder who your plus one is going to be. <laughs> But it does express, I think, some very real trends within the cryptocurrency community. Crypto investors have made themselves unimaginably wealthy in currencies that aren't attached to a specific country. And they're beginning to understand what kind of possibilities that creates in terms of where they can live. I mean, we don't really think about it, but, you know, if you're American and you're watching this, you're paid in dollars, which is a money that is attached to the American government. But what if your wealth was stored in a currency that basically wasn't attached to anything. So this trailer, I'll admit, I thought it was a joke. Uh, I mean, there are several musical numbers in it, which... Got the keys of my wallet Where I hold crypto land tokens Cause this place is blockchainized Get familiarized I don't wanna leave but here's the thing, a lot of these projects are gonna fizzle, but few of them won't. And the ones that don't become fire Festival level humanitarian disasters could really begin to change the way we think about, well, all of society, right? So I started poking around the Cryptoland ecosystem to, I don't know, see how you build a nation state, right? And I, I did just wanna see like, were people really, really invested in this stuff? And I kind of came away with a creepy feeling because, yeah, it is dumb. A lot of it's dumb. I mean, there's like a talking Bitcoin that walks around like in the trailer, right? But people are throwing like pretty serious money at this and they, they really want this sort of thing. I did get a hold of Cryptoland's white paper, which is sort of like the, their outline of what they're trying to do and the timeline they're trying to achieve it at. They called it a Y paper. They have since restricted access to it, but I can share some tidbits here that I found interesting. Here's how the Crypto Land project works. They're using two tiers of tokens. There's the Crypto Lander tokens and the King Crypto Lander tokens. Uh, although hilariously, you can't buy either of them if you are a US resident. The King Crypto Lander tokens are what you use to buy one of the 60 parcels of land that they're selling on this island in Fiji. And the parcels are being sold for 319 Ethereum, which is around uh, a little over a million dollars. Although from what I can see, no one has purchased any of the parcels. 
But their Discord before it was overrun with trolls was around 12,000 people, which is pretty big for a crypto Discord. The trailer was the first thing that got a lot of attention. I mean, look at it. Like, of course it got a lot of attention. Got the keys of my wallet. But it was an incident involving the Crypto Land Twitter account that really derailed this whole thing. Last week, Twitter user WideSauce asked the project's Twitter account what the age of consent would be on the island. And in a now-deleted response that you can uh, see here, the account replied, Mental maturity should be enough, winky face. Now, okay, after deleting the tweet, the Cryptoland account posted a statement claiming that they didn't understand the question and they just thought they were asking, like, the age of the people visiting the island. They, They didn't know, like... What it, they, they claimed they didn't know what it meant. They then also started threatening to sue people who uh, claimed otherwise. And I want to be very clear. I am just putting together the publicly available events that took place around the Cryptoland project. Uh, if anyone from Cryptoland wants to get in touch to clear things up, happy to publish any of that. Um, as one Redditor put it, the age of consent question is libertarian kryptonite. And now the project's Discord is overrun with trolls asking if they'll be allowed to legally murder people on the island. But there's also a bunch of seemingly genuine supporters of the project who are still in the Discord that are becoming curious what the consent laws would actually be. Widesauce has a whole thread about getting into the Cryptoland Discord after he had already been kicked out. At one point, he was able to get back in to ask if it would be okay to date his cousin on the island. So what is the future of Cryptoland? Like, what happens next? Honestly, I'm not sure. I don't think anything. I think the whole thing's probably going to fizzle. I don't get a sense there was a ton of momentum behind the project to begin with, but also it seems completely destabilized at this point. And that's kind of what all of these things are. They're just a group of people who pool together money to try to achieve something. uh, And anything like this is just going to mess it all up, right? And that's, I think, the most interesting aspect of the DAO boom right now is that, like, Traditionally, you'd have to create a company uh, through all the legal frameworks that are required to create a company, and then people invest money in that company, and then that company tries to do what it wants to do. But with a DAO, you can just spin up an equivalent and raise insane amounts of money, like the DAO a couple weeks ago that tried to buy a copy of the Constitution. And a lot of them are going to be kind of cringe, but some of these are going to work. And when they do work, it's going to cause things to start to change pretty quickly. And I'm not sure in what direction. Like, we're at this really weird moment where we're post-GameStop pump. We know that people on the internet can organize a bunch of money to make the market respond, but we don't know where it's headed. And I find that interesting and funny and, and cool and strange and obviously very stupid, just like everything else on the internet. We have an entire class of wealth holder now who don't have assets connected to anything other than an internet connection. And the biggest diehards among them are dreaming of a world where that will never change and will only become more pronounced. These people want a stateless life where they don't have any attachments to any particular country and they they can do whatever they want with their internet money that's worth more than real money. That's the ultimate goal for things like Bitcoin. That said, considering what's been happening with a similar project called CityDAO, which is an experiment in decentralized land ownership, starting with a 40-acre parcel of land in Wyoming, uh, which was recently hacked, I'm going to say we're pretty far away from getting an answer about what happens when one of these succeeds. Thanks for watching. Uh, Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment if you like John's motion graphics. I'm trying to convince him to keep doing these videos with me. And yeah, um, I guess my parting advice is like, uh, if you come across a DAO that you find interesting, just do a lot of research on it before you give them your Ethereum because uh, no one's really watching this space and there's a lot of sketchy stuff happening. And chances are, if someone comes to you and says like, do you want to buy a piece of land in Fiji? By, by joining my Discord channel. It's probably not a legit thing, I'm going to say. You might honestly be better off just buying your own land in Fiji if you have that much Ethereum. Like, if you have... Actually, that's a good question. If you have a million dollars of Ethereum, why are you working with a DAO? Why don't you just go buy your own piece of property somewhere? <laughs>